everyone and welcome to the Birmingham Public Library Tales and Tales Summer Learning 2021. Today we're going to perform a skit for you based on the book How the Library, Not the Prince, Saved Rapunzel. It's by Wendy Medore and illustrated by Rebecca Ashdown. <laughs> floor of the tall tower block sat Rapunzel quite idle while growing her locks. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The lift is not working. The stairs are too steep. My <laughs> asthma is bad and my heart is too weak. But Rapunzel just sat. She didn't move. She had nowhere to go. She had nothing to prove. She just looked at the sky and dreamed up a dream while the milkman went off in his float to sell cream. <laughs> It was later that day, much warmer than most, when the postman came round to deliver the post. <coughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please let down your hair. You've got a brown letter. It looks like a bill. Shall I leave it down here on the windowsill? Rapunzel just sat. She didn't blink. She had nothing to say. She had nothing to think. She looked at the birds. She started to frown. So the postman just left and went into town. <laughs> when the sun was full blazed, just after lunch, the baker came round selling warm things to munch. Bark! Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please let down your hair. I've got a bad knee. I'm not one to moan, but let me send up some bread or a hot buttered scone. But Rapunzel just sat. She didn't flinch. She wouldn't move, not even an inch. Not a sound was uttered, not a word was said. So the baker went back to her shop to sell bread. <coughs> now Rapunzel's aunt was the caring sort and round about for some dinner she brought. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please let down your hair. I brought a fish pie for you to eat. I wrapped it in tinfoil to keep in the heat. But Rapunzel just sat, she didn't stir. A statue wasn't as still as her. She just watched as the rain began to fall while her aunt dashed off to the bingo hall. Now the story must have a prince, of course, and he showed up late, but not on a horse. With the wind in his hair and blowing his hooter, along came the prince riding a scooter. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please let down your hair. He brought with him chocolates and roses so red. He wore a bandana and shades on his head. Rapunzel just sat as still as a wall. She didn't think much of her prince at all. She just stared and stared at the rain and the prince was never seen again. It has to be said without lunch or dinner, Rapunzel was starting to get a bit thinner. To leave her without any milk was mean. Said the milkman on hearing Rapunzel was lean. And I should have really delivered that letter. The postman felt guilty and wished she were better. Uh, to think, said her aunt, that's, that she's all alone on the 16th floor and as thin as a bone. Rapunzel has patience. She doesn't move. She has nowhere to go. She has nothing to prove. But to sit on your own all day and dream, well, it's not really good for one's self-esteem. The milkman, the aunt, and all of her friends decided together to make their amends. They climbed up the stairs, steady but sure, all the way up to the 16th floor and burst through the door of Rapunzel's flat where she sat alone with only her cats. They cooked her some supper the first in weeks. It brought back the roses back to her cheeks. The postman gave her the letter to read. And what happened next you'd hardly believe. Rapunzel got up and shouted with glee. I've got a job at the library. She skipped round the room and she started to groove. She had somewhere to go. She had something to prove. She went to the toolbox and brought out a wrench. And she fixed the elevator with barely a cinch. Thank you, dear friends. I'm all right. The next day came along and the sun came up early. Then she got in the lift and went down, down, down to start a new job at the library in town. Everyone loved her. She sparkled all day and life at the library continued this way.
For along with her hair and ravishing looks, she loved nothing better than reading good books. Now Rapunzel has changed and that makes her wince to think that she used to just wait for a prince. That she used to just sit, that she didn't move with nowhere to go and nothing to prove. For now she reads the books every night under the beam of her bedside light. She can tell you the distance to the moon. She can do Scottish dancing and play the bassoon. She can speak in four languages, skip and play chess. She can knit tiny egg cups and cross stitch a dress. She knows the difference between crows and rooks, all because of library books. So don't just wait for your prince to show. He might turn up, but you never know. Pop down to your library and borrow a book. There's so much to find if only you look. But don't just sit and wait and stare. There's more to life than growing your hair.